This is the Pioneer CT110 stereo cassette deck. I liberated this from a joinery workshop where it's been sitting gathering dust for a number of years. It's slightly unusual in that it has a 20 volt DC input. When I found it, it was actually part of a component set um, with an amplifier and tuner and it took its power source from the amplifier. I don't have the original power supply because I didn't want the amplifier but I've managed to find this old computer laptop power supply and I've soldered on a, a plug which fits in the back so let's test it up. Well, that doesn't sound great, but something's happening. Well, that's why we were getting the buzzing noise. The capstan belt is basically deteriorated, turned to tar. There's another belt which is turned to goo. So the larger belt towards me is what feeds the capstan and there's a smaller belt at the end which feeds this mechanism here and then we've got the solenoids for the logic transport you can see the belt for the tape counter is still still intact but that comes as part of the kit so I'll replace that anyway Just going to try and clean this up with alcohol. Okay, this flywheel is pretty clean now. This pulley is as clean as I can get it, but the, there's some sort of black staining that won't come off. I've been trying to clean it for the last 10 minutes. Um, the motor pulley is going to be a lot trickier so I think I'm going to have to remove the whole transport mechanism. Maybe try and take the motor out. This should just pull off. Gonna need to remove this fascia anyway. Does it need a deep clean? Uh, to do that, I'm gonna have to remove this knob. Oh, that came off easily. More screws under here. I think they're all the same type of screw. There's a little spring on here to unhook. Oh, that's just for the eject. Another screw in the end. Probably one in here as well. Yep. Okay. Okay, you're going to unhook this belt for the tape counter. There's a spring in here, I'm not sure what it's for. See, it's just feeding up here, and I'm not sure what it's doing. Oh, these sockets here don't, don't want to come out, they're pretty tight. Still not sure about that spring, it might just be grounding. Date code on this motor of November 82 and as I'm recording this it's the 5th of November 2022 so happy 40th birthday to this machine. While I think of it I'm going to spray this potentiometer, let's fill it with contact cleaner. I'm now thinking I might be able to unclip this 
board from the front panel without having to disconnect the cables. There's a screw here where the tape counter is. I think that needs to come out. Can I free this little board from here? Okay, that's come out. Some sort of optical sensor. A little infrared LED in there. Will this panel now come out? Aha! Yes, it will. And as I suspected, this spring here is just for grounding. You can see here where it connects. I'm not sure why, really, because there's no... There aren't any metal parts on the front that need grounding, in, in my view. All these buttons on the front need a good clean. And thankfully they can all be removed by squeezing in these clips. Unfortunately, the first one I attempted, I managed to snap off one of the clips. Well, that wasn't very successful. I only managed to get two of the buttons out without breaking legs off. I can always just glue them back on. Tape counter came out quite easily with this just one screw holding it in place. I'll probably just use some compressed air on that. I'm definitely going to have to scrub this. Underneath the fascia was all pretty clean. Don't really need to touch this, although I am going to just check these switches are all okay with the multimeter. of those were a little reluctant so I'm gonna spray some contact cleaner in there. Well unsurprisingly I was wrong about the grounding. This dark grey panel here is actually metal. I thought it was plastic. I've got my meter on continuity and you can see it's a bit scratchy but there is continuity so that's metal, and so is this panel on the front of the cassette window. I was trying to scrub this off for ages, and then I realised it was a chip in the paintwork. So I'll touch that up with some acrylic paint or something. Also, I was a bit aggressive with that paint mark on the side here. So I've dulled the finish a bit, which is a shame. I'll see if I can polish that up with something. Earlier on I mentioned this optical sensor here and I wasn't sure what it did. Um, but I've since learned that it's, it works in conjunction with the tape counter. And this wheel here with missing segments sits in here and interrupts the the sensor and because this is driven by the capstan belt apparently it regulates the speed of the motor so there you go right, my next task is to try to remove this transport mechanism you know, two screws on one on either side I need to snip this cable tie so I've got a bit more slack. There we go. So now I can finally get rid of the remaining bits of belt. So this is the soft eject mechanism. It's just a Just a vacuum tube really, just slowly allows it to open and that can be adjusted by the look of things by this screw here. I might do that because it is a little bit slow. Right, it's a bit tricky to show you but there's two screws on this metal plate. One here and one just in here. And I think once those are removed, this plate can come out. Right, I do need to cuts some more cable ties.
So finally I can now clean the belt remnants of this motor pulley. Well, I think this is as clean as I can get this pulley. There's still black marks on it, but they're just stains, I think. I've, I've cleaned and cleaned and they won't come off. And when it is time to change the tape counter belt, this metal back plate just unclips from the top. And then it's really easy. Everything moves pretty freely, so I don't think I need to do any excessive lubrication. I decided to remove the capstan entirely by taking off this little plastic washer. And yeah, there's still a fair bit of gunk on there. Okay, I'm happy now that this is as clean as it can be. So I'm going to put it back. And then I just need to put this little plastic washer back on. And push it down. Oh. Yep, this definitely needs more cleaning. I really want to remove this pinch roller to clean it properly because it still looks pretty bad. But to do that I'm going to have to take the door off and that means removing this clip here and the spring and this dampening piston which should just... That's the piston removed. Now this should come off. Oh, there it is. And finally it is free. That's cleaned up pretty nicely and it's still got a nice grip to it. So I think that's going to be just fine. I cannot find that capstan washer anywhere. I've spent half an hour looking for it. So instead I have, I found a rigid piece of plastic and then I drilled a hole in it, just slightly smaller than the spindle here. And then I took the back off my hole punch so I could feed it through and make sure the hole was centered and then punched it out. And it's produced Tiny little, oh no. Okay, I found it again. There it is, and it's holding it in place. So I think that'll do. Six days later, and my belts have arrived from Portugal. Okay, I think I just need to lay this over the flywheel and perhaps hook it on this post. Oops, there's a, there's a little peg here and then this other belt. I can do the same. Oh, perhaps I can't. Well, it doesn't matter as long as it's on there. And now I can reattach the motor. Right, now I need to try to hook these over the motor spindle. I totally didn't need to put that on beforehand, I, I didn't realise. Well, I need to do the capstan belt first. All right, I'm going to see if I can do this with a screwdriver. Now I've got it twisted. Okay. I think finally that is pretty good. Now I need to mount the tape counter belt before I put this plate back in. That goes in here. And I'm just going to hook it round the corner to keep it tight. OK, 
Okay, grinding springs in place. This little hole here with a, a pin to make sure you get it the right way round. Then we have this plate and then the nut. Doesn't need to be too tight. I should have fitted this on the power switch before I put the front panel on. Oh, no, I might be able to do it. Yes. But you know what? I didn't install these buttons onto these switches. I'm not sure I've got room now. Nope, they do fit. Ha. Oh, does it go through there? Oh. oh, that is a pain. So it goes in this way and I should have fed the this piece through this slot before I put the face panel on. Maybe if I unscrew the, the mechanism. I'll have enough wiggle room. I'm going to unhook the tape counter belt again. Yes. And then the spring hooks onto here. And really, before I go any further, I should check whether this thing actually works. It's quiet. So everything's running quietly. There isn't a problem with the motor after all. And the capstan is running constantly when powered up. I'm guessing that's how it should be, but it does seem a bit inefficient. That's my makeshift washer. I just realized there's no headphone socket on this thing which is probably because it was supposed to be paired up with that amplifier and that would have had the headphone socket. So I'm not going to be able to listen to this until I hook it up to an amp but I've got a cassette that I don't care about and I can at least see if it's playing properly. Well, that didn't sound good, although I haven't hooked up the tape counter belt yet. Okay, let's try again. So that little diode thing obviously is important because if it's not sensing that wheel turning, it's just going to stop the tape. But it seems to be fine now. Tape counter's moving. Level meter working. Okay, I put the door back on and the soft eject is a much better speed now. After adjusting the little screw here on this piston. There's always a screw left over, isn't there? Can you remember where that came from? Okay, let's hook it up and test it. Okay, good and bad. Um, good is that the fast forward works fine. And the rewind. And auto stop. But it's playing really slow. Like, seriously slow. I'm going to try and hook it up directly to the camera's mic input so you can hear it. I don't, I'm not going to play much because I don't want to hit a content match, but hopefully you'll better tell that it's, it's not running at the right speed at all. 
Now I can adjust the motor speed of course quite easily by putting a screwdriver in the back of the motor but I'm just wondering why it's so far out. Um, maybe I should have oiled it before I put it back together? I don't think I can easily oil it now put it all back together. So I'm going to try the speed adjustment on the motor. Right, I've got my screwdriver in the back and I've just been listening to it and adjusting the speed and I get it so that it sounds just right to me but then after a few seconds it will slow down again and then speed up again so I do think that the motor needs servicing. The good news is that the all of these buttons seem to be working the normal or high bias tape selector and the Dolby noise reduction. So I need to remove this this belt first of all. It will be a relief if I don't have to remove the mechanism again. I always enjoy disassembling the first time but if I have to do it again after reassembling it's really annoying. Yes. Okay, I'm going to have to desolder these wires. Solder should be leaded so it should come off quite easily. Very easily. And I believe you should be able to just pop this cover off by levering it up. Whoa! Okay, that's one way to do it. Now I need to remove this spindle. Oh, that was easy enough. There's a couple of capacitors on this board here. Three actually. Right, so how do I remove this? It's reluctant to come off. I see the little tie the little contacts on the motor have been twisted because they're in slots so they've been slotted on and then twisted to lock them gently turn it it comes off capacitors look okay no signs of leakage oh having said that this one does look like it's leaked green gunk on it. That is a 10 microfarad 16 volt. Right, I'm going to worry about that capacitor later. First I'm going to get inside of here. Okay it's starting to come. Whoa! And there was quite a lot of wear on these. Carbon deposits. It's going to pop this out. It's actually not as bad as I was hoping. I was hoping there'd be some obvious signs of wear that I could clean up. The fact that it doesn't look too bad is a bit worrying. Service attempts may be unsuccessful. Let's go take that off. Can always add some oil, that might be the the answer. These brushes are so delicate. Well, miraculously, I've found a 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitor in my parts bin. It's quite a bit bigger than the one that's in there, but I think it should be okay. Okay, it's finally out. I think you can see now all the gunk that's coming out of it. Something green. The board is darkened too in that area. Okay, new one in place. It's 
Just going to clean up some of this flux residue with alcohol. I suppose I could replace these other two. Not sure what this one is. Uh, 3.3, 25 volt. And this one's another 10 volt. Sorry, 10 microfarad, 16 volt. I don't have a 3.3, but I do have another 10 microfarad. So again, it's bigger, but I should probably change it while I'm here. Now let's clean up the motor and give it a bit of oil. Just going to use this bottle cap, which I have just washed. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to try and clean this up a bit with some very fine sandpaper. And this is the finest I have. It's 5000 grade. Well, I don't think I'll get it much cleaner than that. Now for the brushes. Could try and wedge a toothpick in here. So I'm also going to put a drop of oil in here. Right, this could be tricky. Because I can't really see what I'm doing. Or is that what these slots are for? Do you poke something through the other side and hold it out of the way? That seems promising. Perhaps I just need to bend one out of the way. Get in. Yes, got it. I think it's smoother. Also, I'm hoping these capacitors are going to make a difference. I'm going to twist these terminals slightly, like it was before. It's already quite solid. This obviously goes in this way. Plenty of room for those capacitors. It feels pretty smooth now. I think I'm going to add the tiniest bit more oil in here. Reattach the two screws. One on the bottom was uh, pretty tricky, but got there in the end. It's going to bend it over to keep it in place. Looking at the tape counter, is this where our mystery screw came from? I think it is. You all knew that, didn't you? Ah, I feel better now. Just need to reattach the belts and then we're ready for testing. I don't remember the belt running quite so close to the edge of the flywheel, but that's where it wants to go. And as we know, it's easier to hook it on the motor first. Much easier. Right, we're back in the other room. Just going to plug the power back in. 
Let's check that it's still working. And worryingly, that actually sounds noisier than before. Right, I think I know the problem. If you remember I said I didn't remember the belt sitting that far forward on the flywheel. I think it's because I've pushed the the plastic pulley too far down the motor. So it's kind of now rubbing on it, and that's why it's making that noise. So hopefully I can ease that off a bit without disconnecting the belts. I'll come back in the other room because the light is better. But you can see you can see we're right on the edge of the flywheel. That spindle is just or the pulley rather is just rubbing in there, so I'm gonna try and ease that off a bit. You can actually see from this angle that this belt isn't straight. So that actually gives me a, a guide for how far I need to ease it off. I should be able to lever off this ridge here. Touch more. Yeah, I think that's good. So we've got a tiny gap now on the edge of the flywheel. Okay, let's try it again. So much trial and error when you're doing these things. Okay, let's turn it on again. Oh, that's much better. Well, it sounds better without a tape. Does it sound better when playing a tape? Right, I've just had a quick listen and I don't want to play it for copyright reasons, but the tape I played is playing too fast, which is a really good sign because obviously that suggests that the motor was adjusted correctly in the first place. It was just not moving freely and that's why it was playing slowly. So now having lubricated it, it's now playing too fast because of that adjustment I made. So now I, I just need to adjust it back down to the correct speed and hopefully it'll be a lot more consistent. Well, I've adjusted it by ear because I don't have a test tone tape. And the good news is that the wow and flutter is completely gone. It is holding steady. There's no more of the speed inconsistency. So I'm pretty pleased with that. The only way I've got really of um, trying to get it playing at the right speed is to try and sync it up with the same song streamed through my phone. If they're both playing at more or less the same rate, then I know it's pretty good. Right, that was a bit of a faff. It took a while, but finally it's playing pretty much perfectly in sync with the streamed version of the song. Um, it's like after two minutes, it's maybe a tenth of a second slow or tenth of a second behind, but that's not noticeable. And I, I just can't adjust the motor any, any more finely, I don't think. So... I'm calling that as good as it's going to get. Right, the final task is to reattach all these buttons, which may be tricky with all the broken ones. I don't think these legs can be salvaged. Even if I can stick them, they're not going to withstand the bending required to get them in the slots. So I'm just going to put in the ones that are intact. Do I need to clean these more? Yeah, I'm going to give these more of a clean. I just used my Dremel tool with the brush adapter on a very low speed. And they've come up really nicely. Okay, that's it. It doesn't actually feel like it's clicking. Oh, that wasn't good. Oh, this is bad. Even without the leg, that's that's fitting in there quite well. I mean, they have got these other these other points that slot into the hole, so maybe maybe I don't need to glue them. I think they're going to be okay. 
because it had to be the play button that's not working. Right, here's the problem. This board is not quite snapped back. Right, I fished the button out and I've snapped the the board back into the clip at the back. But now the button's not clicking. It's just solid. And I can't remove this button because this was one of the ones that had the clips intact. I need to remove the board again. Well, from this side there's no problem. It's swinging properly and it's clicking fine here. I think I may have damaged this. These other buttons are a lot more springy. This is the play button and there's not much travel. Maybe I put too much stress on the plastic. How do I fix that? So somehow enforcing the button on, it's now set too far back. It should be here, but when I let go, it goes back to there. And I don't think I can do anything with that. This plastic hinge is now forced, is now bent backwards further than all these others, which means it's constantly pressing on the play button, which is why when I press it, it won't travel. It's because it's already gone back as far as it can. Because the plastic's fatigued now, it's not gonna, it's not gonna move back to where it should be possibly shave a bit off this post to reintroduce the travel. I'm going to try this. I'm going to poke it in from the side here. I'm applying some pressure from this side. That should be enough. It's clicking. Actually it feels nicer than the others. I think we're finally ready to put the case back on. I'm gonna try buffing it up with this shoe shine thing. Got some acrylic black paint. The silence of death. I think it's actually okay. Well, it's been a journey, but I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And just to show it working, I'm gonna play out with a bit of an audio book. It's you. God, I'd like to get hold of them people who dig my bag. I'm a sticker where Rart's concerned. While editing the video, I just thought I would check these capacitors that I removed from the motor. This one on the left is the one that had the green gunk coming out of it. And the other one is the one that looked fine, but I changed anyway. Right, so it's showing 3.15 microfarads, when it should be 10. And the ESR is over 40 ohms. And I checked a chart and it should be 8. So that's clearly way out of spec. Yeah, so that one is in spec, I think. Yeah, sounds a little low, but this one definitely needed changing. 